biggest challenges to me was when I was at Bible College, thinking I was going to be working in Sydney in ministry. One of the lecturers said to me, are you prepared to trust God with everything in your life? Or are there some areas you think, no way? For me, the no way was going overseas. Are we trusting God with everything? Whether that's our time, our money, or where we're willing to serve Him. When you get to heaven, are you going to try and give a whole lot of excuses for why you didn't go, or are you going? We're being called by the church in Tanzania to go and be involved in the work that God is doing amongst them. When I go out to a location, just because I'm white, people will turn up the very first time. You have a seminar, maybe three months ahead you've told them you'll come, you'll bring some Bibles that just aren't locally available. They save up their money, they bring it in the equivalent of five cent pieces. And often that in itself changes the church. Because before there was one guy with a Bible, the guy who preached. Now you've got 50 or 60 Bibles. It changes from one person stumbling through the Bible reading up the front to 30 people reading alongside him and you can hear all of their voices as they're involved and want to know what this actually saying. So the big question is where's the church going to be in another 20 years time if we don't answer the call to go out and help them in the work that's going on. Average education in Tanzania is very, very low. That The ones coming into our courses on average have only third grade education. They're the ones who are now running everything but are keen to read God's word and preach it faithfully. And so they want to do that well. And so they're calling people to come and help train them. They're calling people to come and be involved with them out in ministry in difficult locations where the average of it is only 50 cents. One of the exciting things I got to do was to go back to an area where I'd already been doing Bible studies. And I took a team with me of people who'd been trained through the Bible school. I had it all in my mind that I was going to have to do a lot of work this day and these guys were going to have a go and I would be helping them. The very first session we sat down to read through James chapter 1. These guys who had been trained were able to sit down, open God's word, realise there were people in the group who couldn't understand the language we were using, so we're translating it into local language. We're making sure everybody in the group was having a chance to speak and not feel intimidated. Was making sure that the discussion stayed on track to the Bible rather than going off into other areas, but making it relevant to daily life. We're being called by the church in Tanzania to go and be involved in the work that God is doing amongst them. For all those who don't know that they're meant to be over on the mission field right now, the most immediate thing, of course, that every Christian can be doing is to be praying. And to be praying for God's work throughout the whole world. And the best way to do that is to be informed. When you pray about your church, you know what's happening in your church. To pray about things that God's doing in Tanzania or Italy or Chile or wherever it might be, you need to be informed. The best way I know to do that is to join a mission organisation. Find out exactly what God is doing through different missionaries and through different church organisations in the rest of the world. As far as care goes, as a missionary, I'm never there alone. I'm always part of a community of Christians all around the world. There's one of my link churches that has organised a roster with two people every month to write me letters. I don't know them, I'm looking forward to meeting them, but they've just written to me and telling me things about their lives. For me in particular, my work would be crippled if I didn't have a car and fuel paid for all the time, because public transport is just not an option. I walk to some churches up to four kilometres over mountains. Quite frankly, I can't carry a box of Bibles and do that. I need a car. The money that's sent to CMS doesn't just affect my life though. It gives me an opportunity to be involved in ministry with the people I'm around. It gives me an opportunity when somebody comes knocking at my door and says I am starving to give out of the money that you've given me to give to other people. But not only that, CMS actually sends money for the Bible school where I'm involved so that the students who are paying about $45 for the five month course 
to be able to go to Bible College. The real costs are something more along the lines of $250, but there's no way they could ever go if that was the case. CMS has also sent so many bursars off to get and trained, so we've got leadership in our diocese. So the money that people send to CMS is not just putting missionaries in the field, but that's the prime objective. So the churches overseas are just not like Sydney. They're asking for help, and it's people like us, people like the people in your church, my church, who can actually answer the needs of these churches. People in Tanzania in particular are calling for people to take up the opportunities to train pastors, to train teachers, to train locals in their churches to be faithful Christians. People are not disobedient if they don't go, they're disobedient if they don't consider it. For me, it was a long journey and I was really slow to get involved. But it was knowing missionaries, talking to them, seeing their real people. It was getting prayer points from different ones around the world and seeing what they were involved with and being committed to actually pray faithfully and then being prepared to give financially in a way that means I was committed. It just means opening your horizons to what's around you. And what is God doing? Not just here in Sydney, not just in your church, but all over the world. Somewhere, 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 somewhere